and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. It's time to learn about Transformers! And as much as I love robots, especially those in disguise, I'm not talking about those kinds of Transformers. I'm talking about the electronics component that can transfer energy from one coil to another without even touching. It's like magic. Let's see how they work. Let's start by reviewing some of the things we've learned in previous episodes. When a voltage is applied across a wire, the movement of the current through the wire generates magnetic lines of flux, combining to make a magnetic field. Passing a current through multiple wires placed near each other, the magnetic fields will combine, increasing the flux density, making the overall field stronger. To do this most effectively, a single wire can be wound into a coil, forming an inductor. The magnetic field of each turn will add to that of the turns near it. The more turns, the higher the flux density, and the stronger the magnetic field of the entire coil. While some inductors have air cores, we've learned that using cores made of materials with higher permeability can help increase the inductance of the coil by a factor of 100 to 1 million times that of air. Let's talk about how this all factors into transformers. Transformers rely on mutual inductance to function. Inductance is the property of an electric conductor or circuit that causes an electromotive force to be generated by a change in the flow of current. When an electric current begins to flow through an inductor in one direction, as the magnetic field is generated, the free electrons in nearby conductors are forced to move. The electrons are forced to move. This is known as electromotive force, or EMF for short. The EMF from a magnetic field, be it of a solid magnet or inductor coil, can induce a flow of electron current in another nearby wire or coil. A transformer is basically two inductor coils placed side by side. When a current is run through the first, or primary coil, the EMF induces a current to flow through the secondary coil. But the coils must be close enough together for this to work. The application of this concept may be familiar to you as it is used in inductive chargers, like with rechargeable electric toothbrushes. With inductive chargers, one coil is in the charging base, which plugs into an AC outlet, while the second coil is in the toothbrush and internally connects to a battery. When the stand is plugged in, AC flows through the primary coil. When the toothbrush is placed on the stand, the secondary coil is close enough that a current is induced by the primary coil and the battery inside the device begins charging. Note how the charging base is plugged into a wall outlet. Transformers only work with AC and not DC. Let's explore why. An electromotive force is only generated when a current begins flowing in one direction, generating a magnetic field, which in turn forces nearby electrons to move. So with DC, after the direct current is established, the magnetic field is constant and no longer expanding. So there is no longer an electromotive force pushing the surrounding electrons. With AC, the current is constantly alternating, changing polarity back and forth. With every polarity change, the magnetic field changes, generating more electromotive force. So in a transformer, if DC is connected, there is an initial burst of EMF, then nothing once the current is constant. When AC is applied, the current will alternate, increasing then decreasing the voltage, and with every change in polarity, a new burst of EMF is generated, inducing an alternating current in the secondary coil. Since there is no physical electrical connection between the two coils, transformers are often used for circuit isolation. In these cases, the primary and secondary coils have the same number of turns, a turn ratio of one to one. When fed a current, the input and output waves would have a similar amplitude. In some AC applications, like appliances, circuit ground is literally the ground. So if a human were to touch any of the wires, just standing on the ground would complete the circuit and would result in shock or possibly even electrocution, meaning death. Using an isolation transformer disconnects the circuit from mains ground, making it safer. This type of transformer is also used in audio and other applications for impedance matching, which is kind of complicated to get into, but is basically used to make power transfers more efficient. When we learned about AC, 
we talked about how mains AC is generated at power stations. Power is more efficient to transfer at higher voltages and lower currents. So a transformer is used to step up the generated voltages for transfer over long distances. Then a second transformer is used to step down to local mains voltages for use in homes and businesses. So along with one-to-one -one isolation transformers, these are the two other main types of transformers, step up and step down. In a step up transformer, the secondary coil has more windings than the primary coil. The turns ratio determines how much the voltage is stepped up. With twice as many turns, a ratio of one to two, the output voltage would be twice that of the input voltage. A turns ratio of one to four would yield an output voltage four times that of the input. A step down transformer works the same, but opposite with more turns in the primary coil and fewer in the secondary. When a current is run through the primary coil, the secondary coil will yield a lower voltage. Notice how in both examples, the input and output waves remain in phase. Even with the different amplitudes, the voltage peaks align and the waves have a matching frequency. An interesting effect of transformers is that with the voltage change from the primary to secondary coil, the current changes proportionately, but opposite. With step-up transformers, as the voltage increases, the current decreases. While with a step-down transformer, when compared to the input, the output has a lower voltage, but a higher current. Now, just placing two coils near each other is not very efficient for inductance. Much of the primary coil's field is not in range of the secondary coil. To fix this problem, a shared core made of a highly permeable material is inserted into both coils, which helps guide the magnetic field from the primary coil to the secondary coil. This solution is still not perfectly efficient as some energy is lost to heat due to eddy currents. Instead, multiple laminated sheets can be used to make up the core rather than a solid piece of metal. Transformers can also be made using a toroidal core. In these transformers, the primary and secondary coils are often wound concentrically to cover the entire surface of the core, minimizing the length of wire needed. Since the magnetic field is more consistent, it also minimizes the core from generating electromagnetic interference. The downside to these transformers is they can get expensive because they're labor intensive to create, since all the wire that's used in the coil has to pass through the ring as it's wound. Another way to make transformers more efficient is to use enamel-coated wire rather than insulated wire. The thin enamel coating allows the copper wire turns to be extremely close together while still not making electrical contact. For ease of assembly, the wire is wound around a bobbin that the core laminations can easily be inserted into and assembled around. Transformers can be single phase, like those we've already discussed, or three phase. Three-phase transformers have three sets of coils. With each set of coils, the primary and secondary coils are often wound one on top of the other, with a thin layer of insulation between and on the outside. The coil with the smaller voltage is wound on the core, with the higher voltage coil wound on top. Three-phase transformers can be found on power lines to step down to local voltages. I've talked about how transformers can be used for circuit isolation, converting mains power, and inductive charging. Transformers are also used to further step down voltages for household appliances. Impedance matching is used extensively in RF and audio circuits. Transformers can be used to convert voltages for devices designed for various countries, like 110 volts in the US or 230 volts in the UK. They are also commonly found in switch mode power supplies with a DC input to a DC output. So who do you think would win in a fight? Optimus Prime? or a three-phase transformer? Tell me what you think on the Element 14 community. Or if you have any comments or questions about transformers in general, these kinds, not these kinds, you can post that on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.